Welcome to this episode of This Is My Architecture. I'm Dave from AWS, and I'm here with Nicholas Durazamatos from Red Hat. Nicholas is going to tell us a little bit about OpenShift Container Platform. So Nicholas, tell us what is OpenShift Container Platform? So I'm glad you asked that. Uh, OpenShift Container Platform is Red Hat's enterprise grade container platform which leverages Kubernetes and Docker. Great, so we're, we're working with uh, just a standard Kubernetes style configuration, but then we have the OpenShift master nodes that are actually managing this and then the application nodes here that are responsible for running uh, basic con basically containers? Correct, okay. yeah, so for the most part, the masters are responsible for scheduling of pods, determining replicas, um, executing health checks to make sure if a node fails that it's remediated. Well, so one of the things that we've actually talked about is persistent storage and solving the problems of persistent storage. Um, we talked a little bit about Red Hat storage and how GlusterFS is used in that. Can you tell, talk more about that? Yeah, so um, about a year ago, we started actually doing uh, development work with Hiketi and doing container native storage. Uh, what Hiketi is, is Hiketi is actually a pod that lives on a node, for example, and interfaces with OpenShift and also provides both an API and an HTTP interface. Okay, so it's a RESTful interface that I can use to actually uh, communicate with my uh, storage layer. Correct, and as you can see here, like the, the OpenShift master nodes actually talk to the, each of the other individual nodes. So let's say, for example, you're deploying like a regular application, a regular pod, um, and that pod doesn't need any persistent storage. You could deploy WordPress over here on this individual node. That's an application node. Okay. And since it has no persistent storage, it's totally fine to run there. But let's say you want to deploy a node that actually needs persistent storage. Um, any suggestions? So let's say we were going to deploy a web server, something like Nginx. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So let's say we want to deploy it's highly available too. Yeah. So we're going to deploy our two. Nginx instances, okay? And typically, Nginx, when you deploy it, actually needs to have some type of persistent storage, right? Right, and so if we did it just like this one, we'd have no persistent storage, or no, we'd have persistent storage, but that storage would be uh, connected to a, the single application node where that, that Nginx Correct. So, is. Correct, so leveraging Hiketi and Gluster, what you can actually do is you can provision the storage on the back end, right? So this is Gluster file system storage, and it's native through Hiketi and CNS. Now, the way that Hiketi works and that CNS works is nodes actually create uh, stripes or volumes or namespaces based on bricks. Um, so for example, if this node has three drives and this node has three drives, and let's say this node over here has a Maybe. number of drives, right? You can actually have this all collated in a single Gluster namespace. So these are, each one of these bricks is an EBS volume, right? Correct, yes. So uh, these nodes individually are instances. These are actually EBS volumes. You could have a minimum of one if you want to actually have a node participate in, in the uh, Gluster uh, namespace. Or you could have multiple bricks, uh, and they could be mixed and matched as far as the types of uh, IOPS or performance. Okay, so some could be GP2 volumes, some could be magnetic, some might be provisioned IOPS. Correct, yeah, and what we usually see is customers have a dynamic and flexible group of pools of storage that they use, so some of it might be high performance storage, some of it might be for actually large data sets, things along those lines. Okay. Um, and then the Gluster file system storage pieces are actually, so these are, are pods as well that run directly within the nodes. So both the Nginx deployment and the Gluster file system uh, CNS is a, is a pod, and that's orchestrated through Hiketi. Okay, great, so then I've actually attached my storage using Hiketi, using the RESTful interface of Hiketi through the OpenShift masters. So now I can allocate these volumes or I can uh, spin them down or change where they are? Absolutely, so one of the great things about actually having distributed and shared storage is the fact that, for example, if this node fails, that Nginx instance and its storage can migrate over here, spin up, you lose no storage, and the pod just basically recreates itself. This is assuming that you have node two, node three um, on two different availability zones, for example. 
So real fault tolerance. Absolutely, yeah. The way that it was designed was fault tolerance and having distributed uh, data sets. Fantastic. So now we have uh, this whole Gluster namespace is connected through uh, the Gluster FS pods. Those Gluster FS pods are managed through Haketi. Haketi is managed through the OpenShift masters. Uh, all of this works seamlessly together. This is a great architecture. So, yeah, and the, and the great thing about it is the fact that you're actually using uh, AWS services. So, EC2 for provisioning the application nodes and the master nodes, uh, EBS volumes that are specifically providing the storage for the Gluster shards, um, and many other different components that can tie into this. That's fantastic. So, what's next? Uh, I'm glad you asked that. So we've been working really, really closely with uh, Amazon on building these service brokers. These service brokers are actually going to be um, able to take advantage of a lot of the cloud native services that uh, AWS offers. So for example, it could be like things like um, RDS, for example, or uh, tying into Lambda, um, different solutions like that, cloud native solutions that are, are integrated directly into AWS that customers love. Excellent. So I could actually use those uh, Amazon services uh, just the same way that I'm using the Gluster FS pod. Absolutely, they're baked right into it. You don't have to do anything on your part as far as any heavy lifting. They're made directly available and you can consume them. That's fantastic. Well, thanks for sharing with us today, Nicholas. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. And thanks for joining us on This Is My Architecture.